Big up, big up for Jesus. Lift up your hands right now, magnify the name of the Lord. Give God praise for another opportunity to be in his presence in this service this morning. Give him praise from the depth of your heart. Magnify him, exalt him. Thank him for the privilege to be in his presence. Lord, we say thank you. We give you all the praise, Jesus. We celebrate your faithfulness. Let the Lord hear your voice of thanksgiving right now. Do it unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Open your mouth and magnify Jesus Christ this morning. It's not a silent prayer. Give him praise from the depth of your heart right now. Let the Lord hear your voice of thanksgiving. Let the Lord hear your voice of appreciation. Exalt him from the depth of your heart. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you for everything that you have done. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Do we have people in this room this morning? In Jesus', in Jesus glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 18. And verse 19. I want you to understand that you have come to meet with Jesus Christ this morning. You have not come to mark attendance. You have come to seek the attention of heaven. And as the Lord liveth, you will gain attention from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. I said you will gain attention from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ said, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We are more than two in this room this morning. Every prayer item that you offer unto the Lord, they shall be speedily delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. I said they shall be speedily delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. No, only a change of approach guarantees a termination to a reproach of life. You have been coming to chapel, but you are not coming today as usual. It's going to be a chapel service unusual in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said it shall be a chapel service unusual in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. There are issues of concern in your life. And God is saying this morning, if two of you shall agree, we are going to take the opportunity of joint anointing this morning to agree on some issues of concern in our lives. And as you pray unto the Lord, you shall receive speedy answers in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, you shall receive speedy answers in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16, he said, now, say with me now, say with me now, say with me now, when do you desire to see the peace of God upon your life? When do you desire to see the peace of God reign in your family? When do you desire to see the peace of God reign in your health? When do you desire to see the peace of God in your academics? He said, now the Lord of peace himself We give you peace always by all means. Is somebody saying amen? I don't know where your peace might have been troubled. In your academics, in your family life, in your financial life, in your spiritual life. I pray this morning, the God of peace will give you peace always in the name of Jesus Christ. And he said, it's not just going to give you that peace always. He said, by all means. That is whatever it will take God to restore peace into your life, into your family, into your health. God is establishing it today in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, the Lord will establish it today in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray some prayers this morning. You have come to pray. He said, man ought to pray and not to faint. He said, the house of my father shall be called the house of prayer. So you are in the house of prayer this morning. Is somebody ready to pray unto the Lord this morning? Is somebody ready to pray this morning? You shall be praying this prayer that father in the name of Jesus, 
Let the peace of God rest upon every life and every home represented in this service this morning. Is somebody praying that prayer this morning? Let's lift up our voice and begin to pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God, let the peace of God rest upon every life and every home represented in this service this morning. Lift up your voice, make that your prayer right now. Lift up your voice, make that your prayer right now. Enough of trouble, enough of trouble, enough of trouble in your home. Enough of trouble in your health. Enough of trouble in your academics. Enough of trouble in your finance. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the peace of God rest upon every life and every home represented in this service this morning. Go ahead and make that prayer from the depth of your heart right now. He said, if two of you shall agree, we are more than two in this room this morning. We are more than three in this room this morning. We can make something happen. We make things happen on the altar of prayer. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to deliver. There is a God to deliver. If there is a man to pray, if there is a man to pray, he said, call unto me and I will answer you. You have not just come to mark attendance. You have come to seek his attention on the altar of prayer this morning. Is somebody lifting up their voice, making a, a voice of prayer unto the Lord. Let the peace of God rest upon every, every life and every home represented in this service this morning. The peace of God, the peace of God. The peace of God, the peace of God in your health, the peace of God in your home, the peace of God in your academics, the peace of God. Enough is enough to that trouble. Enough is enough to that trouble. Let the peace of God be restored. He said the Lord of peace himself. Give you peace always and by all means. Always and by all means. Always and by all means. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. The Prince of Peace himself will show forth in every aspect of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 15. We are still praying this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 15. The Bible speaking, it said, And the Lord will take away from thee how many sickness? How many sickness? Anyone challenge in their health under the sound of my voice this morning. The Lord heals you now in the name of Jesus Christ. He said the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. So you are not permitted to seek. You are not, your health is not permitted to be challenged. He said, and we put none of the evil disease of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but we lay them upon all them that hate thee. So there is going to, God is turning the table against your enemies today. Anyone that hates you, so it's dangerous to hate, to hate you. Anyone that hates you, sickness becomes their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not the word of any man, this is the word of God. In the book of Daniel chapter 8 and verse 27, it said Daniel was sick for some time. He said, and I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain day. He said, but afterward I rose up. Today will be that afterwards in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, today we be that afterward in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, afterward I rose up and did the king's business. We are in the business of the king in this university. Jesus Christ is the founder and the founder of this university. You, no sickness must derail you. No sickness must and hinders you from doing your 
father's business. He said, afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understand it. God will confuse your enemies and establish your peace in the name of Jesus Christ. God will confuse your enemy and establish your peace in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll be praying this prayer, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke every form of sickness and cast them out of the body of anyone in this service today. Is somebody ready to pray that prayer right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke every form of sickness and we cast them out of the body of anyone in this service today. Go ahead and pray that prayer right now. Go ahead and pray that prayer right now. You have not come to service as usual this morning. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Every form of sickness, every form of disease that anyone, student, staff may be going through, I decree we cast them out right now. He has given us a name that is above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every name shall bow of things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth. Sickness is not our portion. Disease is not our portion. We are in the corporation of the king. We are in the institution of the king. We must stay healthy to be able to do the king's business. Lord, we decree by the power in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke every form of sickness from the body of any one staff student of this university. We command total health. Total health is our portion. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. As you have spoken, heaven will confirm in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, as you have spoken, heaven will confirm in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody that is not tired of praying, let your amen show it right now. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 2. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 2. Saying unto them, go into the village over and against you. And straight away, ye shall find an ass and a cult with her. He said, lose them and bring them unto me. That ass and a, and a cult signify generational stagnation. The mother is stagnated. The child is stagnated. But God is saying this morning, there shall be supernatural liberty for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Every lineage stagnation, every family stagnation upon your life, I declare they are broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall be praying this prayer saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, wherever I have suffered any form of stagnation, either in my personal life or my lineage, I decree my deliverance today by your word. Is somebody ready to pray that prayer right now? Lose yourself like a roll. In the hand of the altar, whatever that might have stagnated your life in any form, it said, lose it and bring them unto me. You are before the king of kings this morning. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. Every form of stagnation holding you down. Every form of stagnation holding your family down. The liberty of God is established today. The liberty of God is established today. Your total deliverance is established today. Pray that prayer with all your heart right now. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Whatever that has tied my destiny down, any form of stagnation in my personal life or in my lineage that has been following me up and down, today is their end. I decree my total deliverance. I decree my total deliverance. I decree my total deliverance. Whatever that is not of God that have tied my life down on the same spot, Lord, by your word, I declare my total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ.
Every form of stagnation is broken right now. Every form of stagnation is destroyed. Pray for yourself. That is a personal prayer right now. You can't be long here and not reflect here. You can't be long here and not reflect here. You can't be long here and not reflect the glory of the Lord upon this ground. Every form of stagnation is broken. Stagnation is broken in my family, in my lineage, in my personal life, over my children, over my siblings. I decree my total deliverance, total deliverance from every form of stagnation. Every form of stagnation is destroyed today. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayer. You can't belong here and not reflect here. Anywhere you go and you introduce yourself as somebody connected to Covenant University, there is a, there is a kind of eyes they look at you with. Yes or yes? You know, apology to my DSA. We was, he was sharing a testimony with me a few, days, a few weeks ago. He attended a conference of the Association of the Deans or, or Student Affair some time ago. And when they were appointing their escorts for the whole nation, they appointed him as the treasurer of all the DSAs in the whole of Nigeria. He had their comment. They said, Covenant cannot steal our money. That was their comment. You know, me and DSA, we are six and nine. Amen. They said, covenant cannot steal their money. You belong here, you must reflect here. The glory of the Lord upon this ground will show forth in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Your testimony will no longer be delayed in the name of Jesus Christ. I said, your testimony will no longer be delayed in the name of Jesus Christ. For every student under the sound of my voice, the troubles that your parents pass through, you will not pass through the same in the name of Jesus Christ. The stagnation your parents pass through, you will not pass through the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody still ready to pray? Is somebody still ready to pray? We are still praying. And we are praying for all our staff in this house this morning. In the book of Exodus chapter 23 and verse 26, it said, there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, thou shalt be blessed above how many people? How many people? He said, there shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And what God is making concerning your life. Songs of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 2. Songs of Solomon. He said, thy teeth are like a flock of sheep that are even shorn, which came off from the washing. We are of everyone bear twins. And none is barren among them. None is barren among them. So as you desire it, you desire twins, you have it. You desire triplets, you have it. You desire cold droplets, you have it. You desire six left, you have it. As you desire it, heavens will confirm in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We are praying this prayer, saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, every of our staff, be living God for the fruit of the womb. Let this month of good news be a beginning of month for them and grant unto them the desire of their heart. Is somebody ready to pray that prayer right now? And if you have siblings, a student that desire the fruit of the womb, connect them with this prayer right now. Everyone that desire the fruit of the womb in this house this morning, Holy Spirit of God, of God, in the sixth month, Angel Gabriel visited with good news 
of conception. In the sixth month, this is the sixth month, Lord. Visit your people with good news, Lord. Visit your people with good news, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let this month be a beginning of month for them. Grant unto them the desires of their heart. Is somebody praying that prayer right now? Whatever you make happen for others, God makes happen for you. He said, if two of you shall agree, if two of you shall agree, be in the prayer of agreement with somebody right now. Agree for their fruitfulness right now. Agree with their fruitfulness right now. Whatever that is delaying that fruitfulness, the Lord brings an end to it today. Everyone believe in God for the fruit of the womb. Let this month of good news be a beginning of month for them and grant unto them the desires of their heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' glorious name we are praying. And finally this morning, Exodus chapter 1 and verse 19. He said, and the midwife said unto Pharaoh, because Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and deliver before the midwives come in unto them. We'll be praying for all our pregnant women staff in this house this morning. We shall be saying, Father, let the day of their delivery be a safe day. There shall be no complication of any kind. And every hand partaking in their delivery is sanctified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody ready to pray that prayer right now? Let's intercede for all our pregnant staff in this house this morning. Everyone pregnant. He said, faithful is he who had begun the good work. He had begun that good work. That pregnancy is kept. That pregnancy is kept. There shall be no issue. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be no any negative issue. Let their day of delivery be a safe day, Lord. May their day of delivery a safe day, Lord. No complication of any kind. Every hand that will be partaking in, the, in their delivery is sanctified. No evil hand will partake in their delivery. Anyone with any evil intention, their intention dies with them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone with any negative intention over any of our pregnant women in this, in this institution, their evil intention dies with them. God had begun that good work, he must perfect it. God had begun that good work, he must perfect it. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. It is done. I say it is done. I say it is done. If you believe it is done, why let your amen show it right now. It is done. And what we will be hearing concerning you and me is the greeting of congratulation. I said the greeting of congratulation. Help me to congratulate somebody beside you right now. Begin now. Now, 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 now. Tell somebody, congratulations, my family. Congratulations, my family. Congratulations, my family. Congratulations. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Make it bigger, 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 bigger for Jesus. With a smile on your face, make sure that the smile is beaming very wide. The smile is beaming very wide on you. Thank you, Jesus. Say with me, it is done. Say with me, it is done. And say to yourself, I will stand here to share my testimony. In Jesus' name. Please put your hands together for Jesus once again. And please be seated. God bless you real good in the name of Jesus Christ. I said the Lord bless you real good in the name of Jesus Christ. God had begun that good work. He will perfect it in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, we announce you in great places in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not serving a small God. You serve an almighty. 
He's a big God. You can't be in the hand of the big God and just be a mere man. No. You can't be in the hand of the big God and be a dwarf in fulfillment of destiny. You are in the hand of the giant God. The step of the giant is ever conspicuous everywhere they go. Your step will be conspicuous everywhere you go in the name of Jesus Christ. If somebody can hear me, let your amen show it right now. I count it a, pri a privilege to bring a word of God to us very briefly this morning. And I know the word will bless your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Testimonies are already rolling in. You had that testimony this morning. After the Sunday service, that evil addiction dies a natural death in his life. I pray everything that needs to die in your life this month, God will kill them by himself in the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that needs to come alive in you, the Lord is bringing them alive in the name of Jesus Christ. If somebody can hear me, let your amen show it right now. He said, they go from strength. Who? Everyone that appear before God where? There is always an appointed place. God does not show up everywhere. There is a place where God has appointed. And this is where God has appointed for this hour. And because you have showed up here, every good thing begins to burst forth in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. They go from strength to strength. Everyone that appear before, so everyone absence before God, go from weakness to weakness. That is the implication. Our Prost Chancellor said, it is dangerous. When you, when you appear before God once a week, you grow weak. He said, when it is once a week that you appear before God, you go weak. But every time you appear before the Lord in Zion, your strength is renewed. I see the strength of somebody being renewed once again in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. To God alone be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. God will grant you a lifetime encounter by the word in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. So I was preparing this morning. God gave me all these prayer points. It's not just what I want to do or what I'm just doing by. I want to, uh, to occupy your time. Is as instructed by the Lord. And every instruction of God deliver people from destruction. And I know destinies have been liberated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I said destinies have been liberated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Or equally when I was preparing in the early hour of today, God told me this. He said there are momentary encounters and there are lifetime encounters. There are momentary encounters and there are lifetime encounters. So, but every genuine encounter with the world lasts forever. Every encounter with the world lasts forever because the word of God abides forever. Every encounter with the word lasts forever. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. He said, the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God which liveth and abideth forever. And scripture speaking, it says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Only the settled word can settle your world. Only the settled word can settle your world. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Psalm 119 and verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That settled word will settle you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Said after you have suffered for a while, he said you will be established and he will settle you. He will settle you. You have suffered for a while. This morning, God will settle you in the name of Jesus Christ. Said after you have suffered for a while, he will settle you. He will establish you. He will make you perfect. He will strengthen you. And it will set to you. By the word of the Lord this morning, your destiny will be settled forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We have been looking at the teaching series for our chapel services this month, which is captioned, The Blessedness of Godliness. 
the blessedness of godliness. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. It said, bodily exercise profited little. He said, but godliness is profitable unto all things. How many things? How many things? Unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. And verse 9, it said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Godliness is a faithful saying and is worthy that you accept it. It's worth it for you to accept it. And in verse 12 of that same scripture, it said, let no man despise thy youth. He said, but be thou an example of the believers in words, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be an example. And that is, it takes a godly life. And that tells you that godly life is not an occasional thing. It's a lifestyle that you must embrace. It's acceptable of all conversation. And if you must be an example, it must be a lifestyle. Because there are people watching you. There are people that their destiny is tied to you. And they are using your steps to make up their steps in life. You be an example unto them. How? In your conversation. That is, no evil word should proceed out of your mouth. What word you say? In charity. That is, in your conversation also in your disposition. That is charity. In your activities, in your disposition, in everything that you do, godliness must be forefront. He says, in spirit, it takes someone that is godly to walk in the spirit. It takes a godly man, a godly woman, to work in the spirit. It says in faith. And that is why the word of God speaking. It said anything that is done out of faith is sin. Whatever you do that is not faith based. He it said it's sin. Because godliness must embrace you and connect you to faith. In faith, you must show the lifestyle of God. In purity, because you serve a pure God. You serve a holy God. You must connect with godly life. Just as we have heard over and over. Godliness simply talks about God-likeness. In your activities. In your character. In everything that you do. Showing the likeness of God. Because that is your makeup. So let us create man. In our own image. After our own likeness. That is your makeup. And it is godliness. That guarantees dominion in life. Until you are, until you show forth the image of God, the likeness of God, you can't dominate. Destiny will be dominated upon. But that will not be you anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. If somebody can hear me, let your amen show it right now. If somebody can hear me, let your amen show it right now. To assess the blessings of scripture, you must mind the instruction of the same. For you to assess the blessing of the scripture, you must mind the instruction of scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 said, and it shall come to pass. If. So if not, it won't come to pass. 
It shall come to pass if. And if what? He said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do his commandment, which I command this, this day. He said, then the Lord your God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Every prayer that you have prayed this morning will not be a waste in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said it will not be a waste in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Only those that mind instruction are delivered from destruction. Because it is what you mind that you find. It is what you mind that you find. He said you, you want him to set you on eye. God set people on high. Men set people up to bring them down. You will not enter into the set up of people in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not enter into the set up of men in the name of Jesus Christ. He said he will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. When you mind, he said he, that is if you mind this instruction. When you mind the instruction, it guarantees you access to the mind flow of life. And when you enter into the mind flow of life, it said the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Just be mining, mining gold of God, mining the silver of God, if you mind his instruction. If your mind is instruction, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, says the Lord of hosts. He said, Acquaint thyself with him. He said, Thereby good shall follow thee. Job chapter 22 and verse 21. Acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. He said, Thereby good shall follow. Come unto thee. Only the good God can give you the good things of life. When it is good, it is God. When it is evil, it is devil. Only the good God can give you the good things of life. And he said, for you to see good, he said, acquaint thyself with it. He said, and be at peace. He said, thereby good shall come unto thee. Verse 22, he says, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his word in thy heart. Verse 23, he said, if thou return to the almighty, thou shalt be built up. You will not be set up. Thou shalt be built up. He said, thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacle. Iniquity far, not just iniquity from the tabernacle. Iniquity far, far, far. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. That is when you will lay up gold as dust. And the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. You mine. You begin to explore the goodies of God. When you are able to acquaint yourself with it. When God gives instruction, your belief is irrelevant to. Either you believe it or not. The law of gravity is here. Yes or yes. Amen. That is why you are not floating. Glory be to God. When God gives instruction, your position is irrelevant. And we will give ourselves wholly to the word, to the instructions of God. And that delivers them from destruction and brings about prosperity and enlargement into their camp. That will be somebody's testimony from this day forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. The blessedness of godliness. And one way to, be, to assess that blessing, 
the best option that the Lord has given unto us is to occupy for Christ. Be busy for Christ and every activity of hell will be far from your tabernacle. The more occupied we are for Christ and the pursuit of the interest of the kingdom, the freer we become from the trap of sin. Luke chapter 19 and verse 13. The occupy till I come. Don't give room for the devil. Occupy. Just get busy from him. Uh, for him. Just get busy for God. And you will not be able to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Occupy till I come. The sage Billy Graham once said, he said, some temptation come to all. He said, but all temptation come to the idol. Some temptation comes to all, but all temptation come to the idol. And that is why for the general saying, he said, the idol hand is devil's workshop. Some temptation comes to all, but every temptation comes to the idol. That is why you cannot afford to be idle. When you are idle, you will mistakenly follow idol one day. And those that follow idol are dull. He said, those that make them are like them. When you see an idol, talk to the idol. Mm -hmm. Bobo. My children will say chikondi. That is chimpanzee. <laughs> Glory be to God. Those that follow idol are dull. And when you are idol, you may follow idol. You will not, God will not allow that to happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is why we must be careful and get occupied for God. Get occupied for God. I wrote here, I, I said, everywhere you find yourself, see yourself as an ambassador. And number one, as an ambassador for your family. And number two, as an ambassador of Christ. Everywhere you find yourself, you have something to protect. Number one, your name. He said a good name is rather to be chosen than silver and gold. Somebody has built that name that you are carrying today. You need to protect that name. And somebody has paid the price for your salvation. You need to protect that price. See yourself as an ambassador of your family. See yourself as an ambassador of Christ everywhere you go. There is always a big unseen eyes going around with you. Everyone will give account of their work. Either good or bad. I've said this many times. Everybody will live forever. Everybody will we do what? We live forever. But what you do now will determine your place forever. Either in hell or in heaven forever. Everybody will live forever. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to live godly life, what do I do? Children celebrate promise or promises. The mature look for the task behind the promise. That young man came to, said, what must I do? The jailer came to Paul and said, what must I do to be saved? What is the task behind this? Number one today, be not unequally yoked with unbeliever. Evil communication corrupts good manner. Be not unequally yoked with unbeliever. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 17 and 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 17 and 18. It said, but he that join unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Be not on you equally you with unbelievers. Unbelievers are down. You are up. The scripture says you are seated with Christ. Where? In heavenly places far above. You are seated in high places. Unbelievers are down. He that is down, fear no fall. It is risky to hold on with somebody that is down. If somebody is standing here now, and I'm standing here, and I'm holding hand with the person standing here, who is at risk? I will not be at risk in Jesus' name. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> so the one standing here is at risk. You are seated high places. Refuse to hold hand with the one that is on ground. He that is down, fear no fall. Be mindful of your association. Your association determines your consecration. Your association determines your elevation in life. Bears of feather flocks together. He said, he that is seated in heaven will laugh. So if you are not sitting in the high, that is he that is seated on the ground will cry. You will not cry in the name of Jesus Christ. Never allow any devil to pull you down. Be mindful of your association. Never be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And number two, continue to fellowship with the same. The place of fellowship is the place of renewal. Anything that is dragging you away from fellowship is dragging you away from the place of purity. Because in fellowship, you will hear the word of God and the word of God has the capacity to purify you. Pattern. Washing them with the, with the word, with the water of the word. You engage in daily bathing of the word when you are in fellowship. And anything that drags you away from fellowship will take you to shrine one day. Because you cannot afford to be in the middle of the road. Nature above vacuum. You are either here or you are there. So you are either in the presence of God or you be. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not follow the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not follow the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. And Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. He said, be, but exhort one another daily. Why this is called day? Lest any one of you be added through the deceitfulness of sin. Never be deceived. And when you embrace God and get committed to fellowship, what will be your benefit? Number one, peace, quietness, and assurance. You enjoy the peace of God. Isaiah chapter 32, verses 17 and 18. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 8 and Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. And number 2, you are in grace for supernatural breakthrough. That is no more breakdown in your life. If somebody can hear me, let your amen show it right now. And you saw that in the life of the man called Job. God blessed him beyond measure because he embraced a lifetime, a lifestyle of godliness. The godly may be challenged, but they cannot be defeated. In the battle of life, you will not be defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Please rise to your feet.